Hey there, this is Bernie Borges, executive producer of Social Business Engine, and this is episode 29 of Poolside Sales Chat. If uh, you are new to my video podcast, uh, I also have a weekly audio podcast that is available on iTunes, and I want, you, I want to invite you to check that out. Hey, on episode 29, I want to talk about this integration between Microsoft and LinkedIn. You know, Microsoft acquired LinkedIn very recently, and they're planning to integrate things. And what I want you to do is I want, I want you to think about the potential that it has on you and your business and your career. Uh, I also want you to think about the basics too. Don't overlook the basics. And to that point, we have a download that I want to invite you to do. It's going to be up here. Just click on that little I thing up there and uh, you'll see a free download there on the 10 tactics to avoid uh, using LinkedIn. So last June, 2016, LinkedIn announced that they were being acquired by Microsoft. And then it took about six months for the deal to close. And then in December 2016, the deal closed. In my opinion, it was kind of quiet. Of course, they talked about it, but it wasn't a big hoopla. You know, in 2016, a lot of hype happened in social media, but most of that hype was Facebook and Snapchat. Yeah, a few other things, Blab shut down, Vine shut down, but most of the hype was around Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat. And LinkedIn was kind of over on the sidelines here. I mean, let's face it, LinkedIn has not really been considered a very sexy or fun social platform. It is a B2B centric social networking platform. And so now that Microsoft owns LinkedIn, I wanna cover some of the key aspects of it that, that can affect you every single day in your career. Now, if you think about it, um, the lines are blurred between professional networking and just networking. And that's one reason that Facebook has become so popular because a lot of professional networking is happening over there. So LinkedIn recognizes that they've got some catching up to do. They, they, need, they need a makeover. And really this acquisition by Microsoft is a makeover. And I don't mean that from a visual standpoint, but in terms of what they can accomplish and what we can accomplish through that acquisition. So Jeff Weiner, CEO of LinkedIn, and he remains CEO of LinkedIn. That hasn't changed. LinkedIn remains a, um, a company, a standalone company that is owned by Microsoft. Jeff Weiner sent out an email to all LinkedIn employees in December when the deal closed. He published that email as an article on LinkedIn. And he talks about how he feels like they're just getting started now, which is a pretty interesting thing to say when you consider that LinkedIn, LinkedIn's revenues, because they're a public company, LinkedIn's revenues were about $960 million. So, you know, shy of a billion dollars, that's a big company. And so he, he says they're just getting started. And here's why I think he's actually onto something. He outlined eight areas of technology integration focus between LinkedIn and Microsoft. What I want to do is I want to cover three of them and, and then I want, I want to point you to a blog post where I talk about this in some detail. That blog post is at our website at findandconvert.com. That's findandconvert.com. Hit the blog and you'll see the blog there regardless of when you're looking at this. The blog is Microsoft and LinkedIn plan integration at scale. While you're there, remember to download that free download that we provide that's called 10 Tactics to Avoid on LinkedIn. You can click on it right up here. So he outlined eight areas of focus, but I'm going to cover three because I don't want to take the time to cover all eight. You probably don't have that kind of time. You can read about it on my blog post because I link to it. So the first one is the integration between your LinkedIn identity and Microsoft Outlook and Microsoft Office products, the Office suite of products. So think about this. You're in a Word document. You're writing a document. Um, you're in, you're in a spreadsheet in Excel or you're in PowerPoint and you're just, you're doing some work. Well, LinkedIn was going to give you the ability from within that application to actually link out to somebody within your network. And I speculate, and I, and I say this is speculation, I don't know this to be true, but I would really be surprised if this didn't happen. That artificial intelligence is going to come into play here and it, it's going to recommend to you who you might actually connect with or, or network with or, or reach out to for input, maybe someone who has expertise on a given topic that you're working on within one of those applications. I think the same thing is going to happen in Skype, which is a Microsoft product. You can be in Skype and 
it might recommend other people to uh, maybe bring into that conversation. So that's one of the three areas. Now, the other one is extending the reach of sponsored content. You know how in LinkedIn, a company page can post something and then sponsor it. You can also post something and then sponsor it, meaning you can create a target audience and through giving them your credit card and sponsoring that content so it'll reach your, your target audience. Well, that's all well and good, and it's actually pretty capable. There's one big limitation, though, and that is that the people that you want to reach must be signed into LinkedIn for you to reach them. If they're not signed into LinkedIn, they're never going to see your sponsored content. So now they're going to extend that reach out to Microsoft Web Properties, and the biggest Microsoft Web Property is MSN.com. I don't know how many, but it's millions of people that uh, visit MSN.com. So now sponsored content is going to be able to reach people that you target out on that property and other Microsoft web properties and imagine the, the reach potential behind reaching, um, the reach potential behind reaching. Yeah, we're going to go with that. No editing here in Poolside Sales Chat. So just imagine all that potential as well as the ability to retarget those people on those Microsoft web properties. I think that's, that's a potentially a game changer. But the biggest game changer that I believe from a, a Microsoft and LinkedIn technology integration is really strengthening social selling capabilities between LinkedIn Sales Navigator and Microsoft Dynamics. Now, Microsoft Dynamics is Microsoft's CRM product. So now, that's it's been a competitor to Salesforce, and Salesforce is a formidable CRM. But you know what Salesforce doesn't have? They don't have LinkedIn. Microsoft has LinkedIn. That's why I think this one is the biggest game changer. So now I think account-based marketing, ABM as a lot of people call it, is gonna, is gonna be even better because the integration between Sales Navigator and Microsoft Dynamics is gonna get even tighter and it's gonna allow brands, B2B sales organizations to do more effective account-based marketing. Now, I do think there's one potential downside to it. Um, and I don't know this for sure, although I've heard some rumors to the effect that some of the features that you and I are used to using for free or maybe in just a, a very affordable premium account are going to go away, are going to go into Sales Navigator. And the one feature that I heard of first, again, rumored, is advanced search. That advanced search is not going to be available unless you're using uh, LinkedIn Sales Navigator. So whether or not that's true, we shall find out. So. If that is true, I think what we're seeing is not unlike what Facebook did with uh, organic reach, where they just reduced it, reduced it, reduced it down to almost zero, and you have to pay to uh, basically play. So I think we, we're going to start seeing some of that in, um, in LinkedIn as well. Now, here's one thing that I don't think that we're going to see with LinkedIn. I don't think we're going to see a feature war between LinkedIn and Facebook, even though Facebook has grabbed some... Um, member usage, you know, a lot of people are actively involved in Facebook, Facebook, Facebook groups, try to say that three times fast. A lot of people are, are involved in Facebook groups on business topics. And that used to be the pure domain of LinkedIn, right? LinkedIn groups. And of course, LinkedIn groups are still around, but a lot of them are kind of useless and spammy. But there's a lot of really good groups on Facebook. So even though there's a little bit of overlap there, I don't think that LinkedIn is going to be in this feature war. And specifically, I don't think that LinkedIn is going to launch live video like Facebook has. Now, I could be wrong about that, but here's why I don't think it'll happen. I don't think LinkedIn wants to see its members spamming everybody with a bunch of live video. And if you think about the fact that there are a lot of salespeople on LinkedIn, that potential exists. Now look, that's a generalization, and I don't know that to be true or not. I do think, however, that maybe, maybe, Live video would be available to brands with advertising accounts on LinkedIn. That's, again, speculation, but I think that's definitely a possibility. So, you know, what I think is happening between Microsoft and LinkedIn and this technology integration, I think it's like no other marriage, if you will, in the social stratosphere. Facebook and Instagram doesn't compare. Google doesn't have anything close to that. Of course, they've got YouTube, but it's an apples to oranges. I really believe that this marriage, if you will, of Microsoft and LinkedIn with the, the global reach 
of the business audience on Microsoft's part is a huge shot in the arm to LinkedIn. What they've got to get right is they've got to make the experience more interesting and even fun. Yes, fun. Because a lot of people have been using Facebook for business networking as well as just regular networking. In fact, it just become networking and it's more enjoyable over there. So LinkedIn has to figure out a way to make it more interesting on uh, from a networking experience side. All right, so hey, that's gonna do it for episode 29. Before you sign off, I wanna remind you to go click on this link here to download this free download on the 10 tactics to avoid on LinkedIn. You can't overlook the basics to, um, don't make those mistakes because those mistakes can really, really hurt you. Hey, for more content on this, uh, I wanna invite you to sociobusinessengine.com where you can watch, you know, sign up for our podcast and uh, catch these, these poolside sales chat videos as well. And, and also just sign up for our weekly alerts so that you, are, you get notified every time that we release one of our podcasts or poolside sales chats. So hey, until next time, this is Bernie Borges, executive producer of Social Business Engine signing off. And hey, if you like this video, go down there and subscribe, click the like button, tell your friends, tell your family, and I'll see you next time. See ya.